better Jeff? Better Jeff. Um, so I will say internally, we have been trying to break up people into multiple different skill groups. I'm typically in the, the higher end bracket and he's typically sometimes in the higher bracket. You know, honestly, he, he plays a much better tank than I do, I'll say. I think I haven't beat on sort of the Widowmaker sort of hit scan front though. Hey guys, I'm Jeff Goodman. I'm the lead hero designer of Overwatch. I'm responsible for designing, implementing all the heroes and balancing as well. Today I'm here to talk about sort of Batiste and how he um, showed up in the game. Actually, Batiste started as a prototype we originally called Gadget, actually, because the idea is we didn't really know what hero he was going to be. We didn't know what kind of character he was going to be. It was just sort of this combination of different gameplay ideas and we wanted to see what kind of work. So the first ability we actually started with for him uh, was what we called at the time the javelin or the lamp, which is what eventually became the immortality field as everybody knows it as. But originally we called it lamp because I, I didn't have any assets. So I think I just grabbed some random lamp assets, like sort of street lamp. I don't even remember what map it was from right now. You know, originally it had this, this actually long sort of pole to it because it was the lamp. And you know, it had this top much like this has now, and it had this kind of like wide top like this kind of. We still wanted to make sure that you know, if you had a big Reinhardt shield in front of it or something, you could still block it, and that was a kind of a cool move you could try to pull off, but it was still largely attackable. So we had this sort of space to work with here above the characters, but sort of below the Reinhardt shield. The big reason we went away from an actual lamp object with like a whole stem and everything was, uh, at the time you threw it like a javelin or spear, which is why we sort of called it that originally, clever players of course immediately started throwing it at weird angles to try to keep the top down. It sticks out from the wall and you can't shoot it anymore and stuff like that. It's funny, we still actually call it lamp internally. <laughs> we can't get away from it. A lot of our internal lamps just stick for so long. This is the first we call block at, which is a really early model. We're deciding that we want to try to pursue this as an actual uh, full game mechanic and we, we're willing to go past like literally like grabbing some random things so the the artist made this really quick block out so we get an idea of what it looks like this is actually Mercy's little UI element here in the middle here you can see the screen effect was uh, a lot louder here sort of on these sides here I think inevitably at this point what tends to happen in, in development always is we're constantly trying to give more information because it's new new character to us new information we always end up kind of pairing it back this is like maybe a step two I would say in the process of just past like the very very first uh, implementation. Um, so here we have a video of uh, what we called Gadget at the time, which eventually became Batiste. So this is like a block out that we the artists do real quick for me. So it's not meant to be super great quality. It's just supposed to like very much differentiate the character. So that's why it's literally like, I mean, this is like a square and another square and another square. Like it's really basic. You can see Soldier 76 gun is still here. We didn't have a block out model for that yet. Anna's picture is still in the bottom left. We haven't really gotten to that. All the bottom right uh, UI stuff is all from other characters. Um, the, the healing grenade here has started off, uh, I don't remember, I think I grabbed this or tweaked this from Zarya's alt fire and tweaked the colors and stuff, it looks really ugly. <laughs> I don't, I'm not usually going for making it look really good, I just want it to be really clear, hopefully when I'm, when I'm prototyping anyway. So yeah, this was actually the original amplification matrix, it's obviously very, very simple. I just went to an artist and said, hey, uh, could you give me something really simple, I don't want to take any time, but just like, give me a flat plane with a color on it. Like, at this point I still don't know if we want to do this ability, we're just testing it, but obviously this is a lot bigger, you know, the normal uh, Batiste old as a ship with this much smaller is probably something closer to that. Um, so this is maybe the, the overpowered version initially. So this is Jeff Kaplan playing the original prototype and oh, he's good at that. Oh, you gotta use your abilities, especially for showing off the prototype. Who's the better Jeff? Better Jeff. Um, Kaplan, I, you know, honestly, he, he plays a much better tank than I do, I'll say. Like, I'm, I'm actually pretty bad at tanks. I tend to be pretty aggressive and gets my team killed a lot of times. I think I haven't beat on sort of the Widowmaker sort of hit scan front though. So I will say uh, we have had a thing internally where we do a lot of play testing and we have uh, a lot of mixed skill levels. I'm typically in the, the higher end bracket and he's typically sometimes in the higher bracket. Sometimes. Sometimes. So early on, you'll notice one small thing here. The lamp effect did not actually cap you at 20% health. It actually just stopped you at one health. So you can see it here. He's, he's stopped at one health here. We felt like we needed a little bit of buffer after playtesting it where maybe you take a stray shot from like a tracer or something and it doesn't just kill you instantly. Of course, he gets nano boosted because <laughs> wouldn't be a healer prototype without a healer accidentally getting nano boosted. <laughs> he started with some more complicated abilities. Um, I can't even remember everything he had right now. A bunch of more deployable stuff. So we came up with this ability, Regenerative Burst. You hit the button and it places a heal over time on everyone around you, including himself. Um, what is interesting about this though, is originally actually this little piece here in his chest actually was meant to be for this ability at the very beginning. Um, he was going to jab this thing himself and then it kind of healed everyone around him, but then it was conceptually got very strange. We're like, well, how is he like 
injecting himself and then it flies around him. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. You know, originally we were going to have this little spire thing here, pull it off for you directly, but that piece was there. From an art artistic standpoint, we wanted to add more sort of stuff on him. His backpack was really big and we wanted to make it feel like he's got a lot of equipment. Even stuff you're not necessarily using in a game, he's just like well equipped. A pretty simple ability, but actually ended up being pretty core to how you play him. Uh, so his exo boots ability are kind of interesting because that definitely was not part of the original prototype. Uh, the original design sort of intentionally had this crouch forcing you to crouch ahead of time to charge it. That's kind of why it's a passive. It's more of a smaller effect on him that does help to get up high places in certain maps and follow your team if they're jumping up high. Yeah, it was. It's, uh, it came really late and actually was ended up being a great addition to him and helped out a lot of situations. Yeah, so talking about uh, Batiste's weapon, um, it went through a bunch of iteration. There was a grenade launcher was your primary, and then he had a second weapon he'd pull out, which was more of a submachine gun. So then we ended up merging the guns together to help address the design concerns as well. You know, obviously this big tank here feels very grenade launcher, very bulky. And that's very intentional because we want to make sure that he still feels like a healer. And then he also has, you know, the smaller barrel on top, and you can see that the kind of the bullets are in this little chamber here. We weren't sure how the reload was going to work. We talked about doing maybe like three different animations. Is it like I hit the button, if I'm just missing bullets and then it does one animation and then hit the button if I'm just missing grenades to do a different animation and then maybe a third one like if I'm missing both it's like a longer animation. I think from a gameplay standpoint this is uh, a much better result so now you can freely use both ammo types. In fact you're somewhat incentivized to use both ammo types because the longer you can go without reloading the better. So I think we ended up in a good spot there. So yeah, this whole this whole page we're sort of we developed pretty late, and that includes the difficulty as well. Where you know we could be changing like if we took immortality field away from him, that takes away a lot of the difficulty in playing him. As an example, the difficulty conversation actually is pretty quick. It's not usually like a, even a meeting per se. We kind of just you know a lot of the designers at this point are sitting right next to each other, and we're kind of just like, hey, we got a difficulty. What do you guys think? And at this point, we've been playing him for months, so we have a pretty good idea of how he plays and how difficult he is relative to other heroes and other healers. The difficulty stars are a pretty simple thing at, at that point usually because we're so late in the process. Yeah, so right near the end of the process where we're pretty heads down on fixing bugs and sort of issues we're finding, fine tuning some balance issues. You know, as we add more and more heroes to the game, those are more and more common. We would never release a hero we weren't happy with or we didn't think was ready to go, but it's definitely like down to the wire a lot of times. You know, we have a lot of uh, bug triage meetings where we all sit down and looking at all the bugs and make sure we fix the really important massive ones. And so far, I don't remember ever having to fully actually delay a patch or delay a hero, but honestly, we came pretty close to the Baptiste we were talking about. If we didn't get this amplification mixtures to look in a way that we're really happy with and be really obvious, then we might have had to delay a little bit. But I think we got there and we're really happy with the result. I am going to fight for a better world. For some, that means a bandage. For others, a bullet. A lot of what you're doing as a designer is sort of a lot of intuition and how things feel and how things are working the way you want them to. I draw from a lot of inspiration from everywhere so and play a lot of different genres, so it helps to have that. I think these days we release so many heroes, it's almost all excitement. This is a little bit of fear. I'm, I'm always a little worried that, you know, People won't find it as fun or interesting as, as I do, but I think it's mostly just super excited to get it out there and get it in people's hands and getting people's feedback and reactions right away. And that's like the best day is like when it shows up on PTR and people are like, I have like three or four Twitch channels open and I have all, I've read it and our forums open. And it's like my whole day is just like watching reactions and getting feedback from people, it's great.